Hi, it's Jamie and I'm here today to do some plaster. Um, a reader, um, a viewer I guess, of one of the videos asked um, about the press plates, how to make these, the instructions for doing the plaster. So um, I have to do a replacement set and so I'll just show you my the way that I figure it out. Um, in addition, I just went shopping at IKEA. <laughs> And um, I love this shape for a mold. It's going to be a great slump mold. So I'm going to find how much plaster I need for that. And I'm going to do these at the same time. So first thing I did was to smooth the surface out of this clay. Now this is clay that I use over and over again for plaster. So it's not, um, you'll see there's a plaster chunk right there but I don't like destroying fresh good clay um, for my plaster work. Now I am just um, making it a little bit easier for the cutters to slide in and out of the clay. And I'll do this for all the cutters that I'm using today. So notice um, a couple things here. I have a mat. This is a cutting mat um, and I use them for my plaster work. And um, I've also taken the clay, smoothed it out, and I left the cutters on while I poured it, uh, pulled away the clay. This helps the clay from not getting distorted. So now I have my shapes that I want to cast and I need to create a caudal around them. I've been doing a lot of plaster. I've created my own coddles. This is part of a sign that I bought in the hardware store. It's like a parking or a sale sign or something. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it around the form. And then I'm going to tape it. Notice I'm not doing a big overlap on the inside. I don't want to have that in my form, the wrinkle from it. So I have that and then to secure it so I don't want the plaster to leak out from the bottom so I'm going to put a coil this is just a cut strip of clay and I'm going to push this all the way around the bottom and actually let me adjust this again all right so there you have it that's my cool form that I'll pour into. And what's nice about these signs is that they have a laminated sign. So I wouldn't pour it part, like usually the front. So the back is more paper-like. I would leave that on the outside and you want the plasticky, shiny, smooth part on the inside. So plaster will not stick to that. Um, all right, for those who don't have <laughs> access to one of those signs or just don't want to spend the money for it, um, another way is to cut a strip of clay. So I have a, a ruler here that I just use to make my strips. And so I just cut the strip. And now I'm going to place it around the form. So my preference is really this method here. This is nice, straight, smooth, straight up walls. These can go a little wonky. Um, so for my last one, I'm gonna use this. This is part of another for sale sign. So this part is ready. I am now ready to do my pours for this. Okay, so before I show you the other form, um, I want to focus on the um, ovals directly into what um, I need for plaster. Um, so I did the math, and if you want to see, this is my math. <laughs> and what it ended up being, and I'll post this information on a slide in this video, but uh, what I ended up needing is 19 cubic inches for the large, 10.5 for the medium, and then 4.4 for the small. And then altogether, 33.9, uh, I'm just going to round it up and say 34 cubic inches is what I need to fill here. So that becomes, that's an important number for later. So 
So now what I'm going to do is we know that this is 33.9 and let's find out what this is. So with irregular forms, my favorite method for um, figuring out what to what I need is to pour the amount into a form, either a cylinder form or uh, a, a square form, and then figure it out that way. So what I'm doing here is I'm pouring the water to fill this up, and then I'm going to pour it into this box. So when you're trying to figure out the cubic inches of a, of, a, of a square or a rectangle, it's so simple. So all you're going to do is you're going to do the length, the width, and the depth time each other. So um, when we look at this, it it's 5 eighths. So all I do is I put the ruler in, and I come out and I see that it's 5 eighths. So 5 eighths equals 6.25 times 10 the length, and then 6.25 the width, and it came up with 40.625. So I'm just going to round that up. I'm just going to say uh, 41. All right, so this together, um, the 40.65 and 33.9, when I round it up, it's just 70, it's 75 cubic inches. So um, I have a chart that I use, uh, and I got it from Frank Giorgiano's uh, Making Handmade Tile. Uh, excellent book. Anyways, there's a chart in there, and I just go with his uh, recommendations. So for 75 cubic inches, I'm going to need 1.7 pounds of water and 2.7 pounds of plaster. So I'm going to go prepare that, and I'll come back and pour. So back in a minute. Okay, I've done some preparations, and I'm ready to actually mix the pr uh, plaster. Um, as you can see, I have gloves on. Um, the other thing that has changed here is my counter is not exactly level. So I ended up putting some shims under some boards. Um, so now that uh, if we look at this, it is completely level on both. So with the push worms, it's not so important that it's level because <laughs> you're just pushing from one side. But um, I like to keep it all level if I can. Um, the other thing too is uh, I need to prepare this surface. Now that I have um, measured everything, I'm going to apply my cooking spray. So it's important once you apply the cooking spray is to take a little sponge or a paper towel and to wipe it all in. If you don't, you're going to have little bubble marks for where the spray gathered. So um, you can do that. I'm going to take a little bit out. I put a little bit too much in. So you always want to have a release agent. And cooking spray or um, dish, dish soap is good. All right, so that's ready to go. Um, so now when I do my mixing, I know how much water I need and how much plaster. So the only thing missing is my scale. And uh, this is a heavy duty scale. I got it because I do a lot of um, mixing of larger amounts. So um, what I need to do from here is to calibrate it to my vessel that I'm using to measure water. So since I'm doing a small amount, I'm going to put my vessel on here empty. Okay, I've zeroed out the scale with this on. So I now know that this is anything I put in here now will be the amount of pounds of water that I need. So uh, as I said earlier, it's 75 cubic inches, which is 1.7 pounds of water and that translates to one pound 11 ounces. So I'm going to pour water in here until I get the one pound 11 ounces. Now what you can do from here is you could just leave it on here and just put the plaster in and that will show you, um, you know, it should equal uh, the total weight of the plaster needed and the pounds of water needed. So this is 1.75 pounds of water and 2.7 um, pounds of plaster. So the way that I like to do it, however, for these small amounts is I just like to use the island method. The main thing is to get the water amount right. 
So here's my water in here. And um, this is the plaster I'm using. Uh, number one pottery plaster from my clay supplier, Clay Planet. And when you're working with plaster, it's not good to inhale the plaster, so you might want to have a mask as well. I'm going to put this on while I do my measuring. So as you can see, islands are starting to form. This is when I slow down a little bit. All right, so this is this looks done. Um, what you look for are the islands to appear and that for uh, it to um, stay above the surface for more than 10 seconds. So this looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna go ahead now and stick my hand in and I'm gonna stir around. Notice I'm not, I'm doing a gentle action here. So I'm feeling for chunks. I'm just moving it around. One of the most stressful things about working with plaster, I feel like is, you know, when your hands are all dirty and messy like this. So I always like to keep a bucket of water nearby, which after I've stirred it, then I can go rinse my hands. So um, you might want to let the let it sit for a minute or two, just to let the plaster completely soak. You know, get the water all around the molecules there. Um, I'm going to go rinse my hands over here. This is another thing I would not recommend. So a plaster is very messy. So look what I what, look what I've done here. I've got this plaster, and it's on my canvas now too. So after I'm done here, I'm going to have to clean this all out. Now while I'm waiting for it to soak. I'm just going to gently pick this up, take it outside, and give it a good shake. So I still see a little nuggets here, but I'll get them later. So now I'm going to have put my pieces in place, and uh, I'm going to first pour the bowl. I like to pour the bigger items first, and then go, go on to the smaller ones. To leave that there for a second, come over here, go about an inch, come over here, go about an inch, and over here. So that's pretty good. I used up all my plaster. The only thing I'm going to do now is tap this one a little bit more. I want it to spread out more. It's kind of um, domed a little bit. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to let this sit for a second and I'm going to take care of my pieces. Um, I don't like to let plaster build up inside of my stuff, so I'm going to go rinse it out really quick and then I'll come back to continue working on these guys. All right, uh, now I'm back. I'm going to tap this. And what this is doing is it's bringing the bubbles um, to the surface. And once I have the bubbles to the surface, I can blow on them to get them out, or I can use some um, rubbing alcohol. I'm not going to do this method over here for these guys. These guys look pretty clean, so I'm not worried about that. Now it's a waiting game. Um, I'm going to have to wait 45 minutes before I can attempt to remove these. Um, and then sometimes when I use a form like this, um, I have to let it set up overnight. So um, I'll come back later once these have set up. I don't know if I'll get this one out today, but this, these ones will definitely come out and I'll show you a little bit more about cleaning them up. All right, see you soon. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes, a little bit more than that, and uh, that's enough time for this plaster to cure. Um, if you put your finger, your hand on it, I can feel that it's still warm. Um, but I know from experience that I can take plaster out at this point. So, um, 
a couple things to be aware of, and I didn't talk about this in the beginning of doing plaster, is that when you're mixing the water, you want to make sure that it's tepid, it's not too cold, not too hot. Look at that smooth, no clay left, or no um, plaster left on that. Okay, so let's take a look at our forms here. Um, I have uh, a little bit of cleanup to do. There's going to be a really crisp edge where the clay met the bottom, and that's for both of them. Now on the ones with the um, street sign, um, or the for sale sign, they have a little bit of raised edges, and I'm just going to use my fingers to knock those down. Um, this one has a little bit more thicker gap, so I'm going to use um, some drywall sandpaper. So and I'm going to use that for this side too. So this one that had been used just with all clay, I have a dedicated sponge that I use for plaster. And so I'm just going to wipe it and get all that clay residue off of it. Okay, for press forms, I don't want this sharp edge here. So you take uh, the drywall sandpaper and you just go around the edges like that. The other area I like to get is where the overlap happened, so I sand that down a little bit. So depending on your weather conditions, you really you now need to let these set up and dry. Um, so you can do that by taking some little pieces of wood and putting them under, you know, and setting them to dry elevated. Or if you have an old cookie rack, you can do that too. but they really need to have air coming underneath them. So this one is a little bit more, has the raised edges here. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll put this down like this and then go on the edges like that. Another thing I like to do once I've made these forms is to indicate on here what is up. So you have the form that was sitting, uh, this is the way it was poured, and you can tell that this is more of the shape that I like, the oval. This is a little bit more rounded because that was the top. So um, you want to be able to use this as the press side, so I'd write the word up on there. So these should be ready, um, to, I don't know, depending on the weather. Um, it's gotten colder here lately, so maybe two weeks, or maybe sooner if you're in a warmer environment. All right, finally, I'm going to try to take this guy off. This one's not coming. So when I have a form like this, uh, it's glass uh, or it's plastic, sometimes I let it set up overnight, and I let the it all cool down completely, and then I'll... Um, attempt to take it off and the way that I do that is I'll just tap the edges I'll go around and I'll tap like this on the on the sides until it pops but um, I don't want to damage this one so I'm gonna let it set up uh, overnight and then I'll try doing it in the morning all right so that's it um, Hope you enjoyed this video and have fun making your own set of press plates. Take care. Bye.